Raise your hand and we'll get a we'll get a microphone to you. Ben, we'll start with you. This weekend's gonna be pretty different than the last two weekends. How do you all make sure the mindset doesn't change? You know, it feels good to be home. Um, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure that everyone knows we went went out this past two weekends and we handled business, but um, it feels good to be home, back in our environment, uh, back in front of our fans, and uh, we'll see if we can handle, you know, a, a pretty good Missouri team coming into in our stadium. Mike and then Ryan. Yeah, Evan, with, with Drew Beam, what was your experience catching him in the fall, and was there any way to see the way that he's developed coming at, at that point? You know, in the fall, he was coming off his injury, um, so so it was kind of surprising to see, you know, how much success he had uh, at the beginning of the season, and and. Uh, till now, he, he's developed into a really good pitcher, but um, he, he was struggling in the fall a little bit. But, uh, you know, when, whenever we started the season, we didn't know who was our Sunday guy. And, you know, Coach V and Coach A, they did a, a good job talking and communicating with each other about um, who they thought could handle it. And Drew Beam, coming from a football background, you know, playing quarterback in front of a lot of fans when he was in high school, uh, I think that kind of uh, gave him the advantage over a lot of guys for the Sunday guy, and you know he took it and ran with it. Similar question, but a different player. Will Mabry, just where have you seen him grow from last year to this year? And how is he? Be, uh, I guess mentally, it seems like he gets those big moments a lot when he's coming in games, runner, scoring position. What makes him effective in those moments? You know, he he made adjustments. And he developed a new pitch, and the new pitch, uh, it's more of a cutter uh, slash slider type of pitch, and um, it. It's so good that it doesn't matter if he's composed or not. You know, he's able to throw it over the plate and, and get a lot of good hitters out. So um, seeing how much hard work he's put in and, and to be able to go into some big situations and, and have him coming out of the pen whenever we really need, you know, a big out, um, it, it's nice to have a guy that, that's got, you know, a, a lot of pitches and a lot of ways to get, you, get a, a good hitter out. So. so Vince and then Rick and then Wes. Evan, two things. Can you – share some body language of hitters when they're in the box against Ben Joyce? Man, it's, uh, I don't think there's, there's ever one person that's in there and that's really comfortable. Um, you know, I, I've made jokes about him. You know, it, it doesn't hurt for him to have some hit by pitches um, because if you're looking at the report and a guy's throwing 105 miles an hour with some hit by pitches, um, it doesn't matter how good of a, a hitter you are. You're not going to be excited to get in there. So, um, you know, uh, you can see based on the swings of some people with with the new pitch that he's developing, his slider, um, he's able to throw it for strikes. Uh, you know, it, people are in there with one goal in mind, and that's not to be late by the fastball. And um, he's going to expose a lot of people, with, especially if he can throw some off speed over the plate. And you guys seem to have handled being the unanimous number one team in the country so well. Why do you think that is that you guys are comfortable in that role as being the hunted as the number one team? You know, there, there's a lot of teams that um, they experience that number one get beside their name and, and, and they start pressing because they, they aren't too confident uh, that it belongs there. And they, they, you know, sort of try to prove that it, it belongs. And then um, whenever another good team comes in, it, it can kind of, you know, their confidence can kind of be wishy-washy. But um, I, I'm pretty sure everyone in our locker room knows that, you know, that one belongs there. And as long as we play our game, our, our talent level is – is pretty supreme. So uh, as long as we keep playing the way that we're supposed to, and don't let that you know affect us too much, but um, we'd be we'd be stupid to not understand that people are going to play their best games against us. And um, I, I think we just need to come out every day and be ready. Hey, yeah, it's fresh on my mind coming in. I saw the, the NIL thing with uh, with Lyles. Baseball getting a lot of attention and deservedly so. What does it mean to you guys to be getting that attention, and getting that help uh, individually and, and as a team? You know, it means a lot because there's a lot of guys that, that are hardworking and, and, you know, that they want to um, not only perform well on the baseball field, but they want to have, you know, their academics um, and, and their living situation. They, they don't want to have to worry about that. You know, there's a lot of people that come to mind um, that come to Tennessee and they give up quite a bit of money to be here and to play, you know, for this team. So um, to have people getting opportunities, um, and, and to have you know companies like Weigel's reach out and, and um, want to work with us, that I think that's only going to you know increase. And um, as long as we keep handling business on the field, those opportunities will arise, I believe. Evan, no matter what level of baseball you're talking about, down from you know the leagues to travel ball to college to, to professional, you don't see a lot of 20-game winning streaks just ever. What's it been like to 
sort of be a part of that? And how do you kind of keep going about the daily grind every day and not thinking about like, oh my God, my team's won 20 games in a row? You know, there, there's a lot of games where our bats have kind of, you know, went dead or, or been silent throughout the majority of the game. But, um, you know, that if you want to be good in this league and in college baseball, you got to have the pitching. And I think that's what's really has carried us, our pitching staff top to bottom. Um, there is no breaks. And, you know, with Blake Tidwell and Seth Haverson coming back, uh, I think it's only going to get better. So, um, you know, our hitting has got a lot of publicity over the past, you know, um, couple weeks. But our, our pitching staff is, is really carrying us through, through a lot of wins, I believe. And what have you seen from Trey Lipscomb throughout the season? And obviously with him stepping into a more expanded role after kind of sitting behind some guys the past couple of years? Man, I, I, think he's, uh, I think he's been the most composed out of anyone I've seen. Um, you know, his, his emotions don't, uh, they don't fluctuate too much, even in big situations, and that's big when it comes to baseball. Um, but, but he hasn't gotten too high or too low. Um, you know, he, he has sat behind a lot of good players, and he's been able to see what works and what doesn't. And, you know, whenever he's gotten in his opportunity, um, everyone, everyone knows that he's made the most of it. So it, it's pretty cool to see. You know, his, his emotional, um, you know, he's kind of kept his emotions same. And even, even whenever it's going really well, whenever a lot of people would get, you know, a little arrogance and a little cocky, he, he's kind of been the same person. So I think that's kind of been the key for his, his success. Time for a few more. We'll go Barron right here and then Jake and finish as well. How would you assess your defense to this point in the season and how good did it feel to throw out a Keegan uh, over the weekend on that, on that ball that got away from him? You know, it, uh, uh, I think I've been playing pretty, pretty well behind the plate. Um, you know, that was my goal coming into the season was to be able to handle the arms that I knew were going to be talented. Um, and I think I've handled them quite well. Um, and, and the more guys I can throw out, the better. Um, but, but as you can see, uh, our pitching staff, they, they kind of worry about not letting people on base. Um, you know, if we give up a couple extra stolen bases, um, it's not too big of a deal. But as long as we're, we're winning games, uh, it doesn't really matter um, the stat line for, for myself, to be honest. And Portland lost enough to seven homers this season. Has his success at the plate surprised you? Yeah, man. Uh, whenever he first came uh, at Tennessee, he was, um, let's just say he did not have much power. Um, and, and there were a lot of people that, that really thought he would never really play here. Um, but he, he stuck to the grind, and, and he really worked on his craft. And, and it's awesome to see. Uh, what he's turned himself into, and, and you know, no one can be um, can take the credit except for him. So, um, hats off to him for for being in the weight room, uh, being at practice every day, just working to get better. And I think he's kind of uh, stepped into a, a role of shortstop that not many people can do. So, um, to see him, you know, hit seven homers, I would have never guessed that his freshman year. But um, there is no surprise now now that he's in there and uh, comfortable in the box and showing that he can display some power. overlooking you guys, maybe treating you as a, a mat a little bit. What's it been like to just watch that level of respect increase for teams that, that come in and know they're going to get the best team in the country right now? Yeah, I think it kind of shocks a lot of teams. Um, and it certainly shocked me on how quick it, quickly it came. Uh, I, I think it starts from the top with, you know, the coaching staff. Um, you know, they, they don't want to be disrespected by anybody because, you know, they work harder than anyone. So to see, to see the, the coaching staff develop that mentality of um, no matter who comes to, uh, to the place that we work, uh, they're going to they're have a battle. So um, I, I don't think that's changed even whenever we have the number one beside our name. I, I think that uh, we're going to keep that mentality and you know, we'll, we'll see if Missouri can come in and, and shake up some, some feathers whenever we're, we're playing on our part. But um, I, I'd be, I'm excited to see you know, the fan base come out and how the team responds being back on our home turf, being the number one team in the country. Thanks, Evan. Yeah, thank you all.